Shalom brother and sister in Christ, welcome to our online service today. Let us pray the collect together. Almighty God, who look upon the lowliness of the Saint Virgin Mary and chose her to be the mother of your only Son, grant that we who are redeemed by his blood may share with her in the glory of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now is the time for praise and worship. Let us sing the opening hymn together. Let us have a few minute reflection before we pray the confession together.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 1 46 until 55. Luke chapter 1 verse 46 until 55. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glories the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generation will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name, his mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers, This is word of the Lord. Thank to the Lord. Amen. Shalom, brother and sister in Christ. We are glad that we could worship together again. So let us pray together. Almighty God, our High Father, we are thankful because you give us grace to listen to your word. O oh Lord, help us by Holy Spirit and inspire us so that we could understand all the, your teachings. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So today, uh, I would like to share with you, um, and my title is My Soul Magnifies the Lord, okay, based on our reading today. Uh, in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And um, according to our church calendar, uh, we will celebrate and commemorate one of the most important saints in our church that is Mary. For us Christians, uh, we tend to have a very negative uh, views when we, speaking, we speak about uh, Mary because we are afraid uh, uh, to be labeled as uh, married worshippers uh, or associate ourselves with the Roman church or we call it a Roman Catholic church. And today I would uh, like to use this opportunity to share with you about Mary in a biblical and positive way. Mary is not just for the Roman church but is for all of us. But the difference is how we get the correct understanding according to the Bible. And we will look at what God had done on Mary and also will focus on the work of God and the response of Mary. Um, so my first question is, is Mary mother of God? Or who is Mary actually? Because this, uh, she was a very, she gave a lot of controversial um, views on herself because some of uh, the people say that, well, uh, because she bore Christ, therefore she was uh, like a super lady or something is uh, not a mere woman, or she was just like us. 
So we maybe we have heard before this title that Mary is the mother of God. So is this title biblical? Is it uh, from the Bible's teaching? So uh, I give you some history, okay, historical facts. Okay, in Ecumenical Council of Ephesus and Chalcedon, the early church leaders used the term Theotokos, or in English is God bearer on Mary. So this term uh, is technically correct, actually, in both a theological and philosophical sense. So uh, one of the problems here is just the misunderstanding of this title. What is really uh, Mother of God mean? Okay, the, the significance is to highlight the divinity of Christ, who was conceived by Mary to combat heresies that deny Christ's uh, divinity. And this term does not mean that Mary has divine nature. This is a very first step we must clear this up. When we say that Mary is the mother of God, according to the church fathers or leaders before that, okay, it, uh, they want to focus on Christ. Okay, it's not Mary actually. And first of all, okay, maybe you will ask, what is ecumenical council? Okay, um, actually, ecumenical council is in contemporary world now. We can view uh, co this councils as a synod or provincial meetings where the leaders of the church came together to discuss about some church issues or very important doctrines or something. So, in this uh, ecumenical uh, councils, uh, including what I have. Uh, uh, written there um, in the Chalcedon and also in uh, Ephesus, we, we as uh, Anglicans honour the authority of uh, ecumenical council as uh, what the Anglican article say, uh, said here. Okay, General council, when they be gathered together, for as much as they be an assembly of men, whereof all be not governed with the spirit and the word of God, they may err and sometimes have erred even in things pertaining unto God. Wherefore, things ordained by them as necessary to salvation have neither strength or nor authority unless it may be declared that they be taken out of the Holy Scripture. So our principle, Anglican principle is, as long as the teaching is, uh, is uh, clearly written in the Bible, therefore we accept. Okay, So we does not accept all the the teachings of the ecumenical council, unless those teachings are compatible with the teaching of the Bible. So yes, we do not deny the outcome of both uh, ecumenical councils on the title of Mary, but we do not encourage uh, uh, our members to use it because it leads into confusion and may stumble ourselves and others who are weak in faith. So we tend to not to use this term, Mary, the mother of God. Technically, yes, in some ways, she, uh, she was the mother of God because she conceived Christ and Christ was God. So that is correct. But in our human sense, our thinkings, when we say mother, maybe we will think about, oh, because uh, mother is our starter. Every child, the starting point is from her mother uh, or his or her mother. Therefore, you like think like, oh, what if I say uh, Mary is mother of God, therefore, it means that uh, Mary is the beginning of God. That, that thinking is wrong, actually. Okay, So uh, to clear this up, I, uh, so let us have uh, a correct understanding about Christ first. Okay? Before we, we figure out who is Mary, is, the very important thing is we must figure out who is Christ. So Christ is fully divine because he is the second person of the Trinity. Oh, we call it as Logos, as what John has said in his Gospel in chapter 1. And he is also fully human because he took flesh from Mary but without original sin because was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we know that this baby, the baby in Mary's womb, is both divine and human. When uh, the angel okay, told uh, Mary about she will conceive a son and named Jesus, at that time, actually, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, that ba uh, baby in Mary was both divine and uh, human. Divine is because he himself is the second person of Trinity. 
And because for us and for salvation, just like what we recite in the Nicene Creed, for us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, this very God, the second person, the Logos, enters uh, Mary's womb, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took Mary's flesh and become man, just like us. So, Jesus has two natures, fully man uh, and fully divine. Okay, so when so that's why we can't deny that Mary is mother of God because Jesus is God. Okay, it's correct. The term is correct actually, but it is confusing what I say just now. So to settle this problem, I would rather say that Mary is the mother of Christ, our Lord and God. If we use this, we explain it more. Uh, this will avoid the uh, further confusion, and this title clears the confusion and defends the nature of Christ. And without um, putting wrong knowledge about Mary. So Mary is just like us. A human is with original sin because all of us uh, inherited uh, original sin from Adam. Okay, What St. Paul said in his letters to the Romans, Okay, including Mary him, uh, herself. But because God has chosen her to be the vessel to give birth this Savior, and this Savior is Christ, both divine and uh, man he must use. so we must clear this first okay very important so now i will uh, lead us uh, to have some summary or some uh, picture okay our biblical mary what i say why biblical because i want to present to all of you that who is Mary actually according to the Bible? Not according to other traditions of man-made stories, but rather the Mary that uh, who was in the Bible. So there are a lot of references here. From the first appearance of Mary is uh, during the Annunciation, where Gabriel okay sent greetings to her uh, and told her about all the works of God will be accomplished through her. So that is Annunciation, and after that. She went to visit uh, Elizabeth, her cousin, and that is visitation. And after that, after she visited uh, Elizabeth, he gave her, uh, God a song to praise God. And after that, about nativity, how the process, uh, Jesus was born. And after that, after Jesus was born, how they go to uh, the temple to purify and how they avoid Herod's killing, okay? Herod's uh, chasing and fight into the Egypt. And... We will see when Jesus in the temple when she uh, uh, when he is uh, he was uh, big okay uh, older a bit uh, where Mary and Joseph has lost <laughs> Jesus and try to find where is uh, where was him and a very important uh, place that uh, Mary was recorded is during the wedding of Cana where Jesus uh, has uh, performed the first miracle that is the wedding in Cana and. The second last is Mary was recorded when our Christ was crucified. And the last place record, uh, recorded about uh, Mary is at the Pentecost, okay, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So this is what basically Mary was uh, recorded in Bible in these uh, few uh, scenes. Huh? And today I will focus on uh, Magnificat where uh, Mary gave thanks uh, to the Lord. And also from here, from this song, we will see Mary's theology. What is Mary's, Mary's theology? So the center faith of Mary, I will, okay, uh, I will share. The first point is this. What is the center faith of Mary's uh, uh, faith? And through his song, Mary's song, or we call it as Magnificat, it's a very uh, traditional song where uh, if you, go to refer our book of common prayer and the order of evening prayer you can see we uh in olden days they will chant and sing this magnificat during evening prayer because it is biblical so the first sentence is mary said my soul glorifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior so it's very clearly mary's center faith is in God. God is our only object of trust and worship and source of our 
joy. This is a very important thing. Because uh, no matter in uh, the Ten Commandments or in the Golden, the Great Commandment that was taught by Jesus, the focus is we must only worship God. And what uh, Mary has uh, given us this example in is she glorifies the Lord and her spirit rejoices in God as her Savior. You, you can see this is her object of trust and worship, not other things, not herself, but only God. And Mary's Magnificat praise was uh, largely paraphrased from Old Testament. Okay? And Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord, my horn was exalted in the Lord. My mouth de derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. So in Old Testament, Hannah, one of the figure, uh, main figure in 1 Samuel, she also praised God by using the same, uh, the quite similar okay, uh, to Mary's song. So we can see that Ma when Mary praised God, she was praising based on what the, the Bible's teaching. So this is a very important thing to us. So uh, my brother and sister in Christ, when we see this Magnifica, don't we have a, a wrong understanding that, uh, oh, is it that uh, Jack is going to teach us to uh, be a Marian follower or something? But no, but we, we see this positively. And because this recorded... This is recorded in the Bible. Therefore, we can learn something from here. And um, next thing uh, we can see here is um, the second point is what is Anglican views on Mary? First, Mary is like us. Mary needed Christ as her savior because she was also a sinner who uh, inherited original sin. And this refute the false teaching of immaculate conception because immacul in this teaching, they teach that oh, Mary is sinless. That is wrong because if Mary is sinless, why then in this song, she sang that she rejoiced in the spirit because God is her savior. So actually Mary acknowledges, okay, acknowledged herself also as a sinner. And if she was sinless after conceiving Christ, because some will say, oh, if like that, maybe after, because at the moment she can uh, conceive um, uh, Jesus and because Jesus is, uh, has also the fully divine nature, therefore the divine nature of Christ will pure, okay, will fully purify Mary until Mary is sinless. What I can say that is baseless, it's not recorded in Bible too. And if she was sinless after conceiving Christ, why after a month she gave sacrifice in the temple to purify herself according to the law of Moses? So we can see up in chapter 2, after she gave birth to Christ and after one, about one month, she went to the temple according to the Moses law. She gave sacrifice because to uh, perform purification for the remission of sin. Therefore, she has done that. Therefore, that means that she himself, uh, she herself is, was not uh, sinless. So she was like us, need, needed Savior, and she knew that the baby whom she conceived was Savior. That's a very important thing. She, she does not credit herself that, oh, because I'm the mother of Christ, therefore I am very great. But no. But like a servant, she was glad because God has chosen her to be the vessel. So the next thing we will uh, try to see is the reasons for Mary's worship. Why Mary okay, sang this Magnificat? So we will see um, in verse, okay, the, the next one, in the verse, verse eight, uh, 87, oh uh, no, sorry, 48, you say, for he has mindful of the humble state of his servant. And from here, Mary worshipped not because she was powerful or have any special characteristic to earn to be the mother of Jesus Christ. She rejoiced because she was chosen because of God's mercy. Okay, this is a very important thing. Mary was chosen by grace to be a vessel for God to accomplish his will. 
Mary is the vessel and God is the doer. The main idea here is only God works in our salvation. Therefore, Mary is just God's vessel. When we say that she was chosen by grace, meaning that not Mary earned herself to until to be the mother of Christ, but rather God chose her by his mercy. And second thing is, Christ whom she conceived became flesh, fulfilling God's promise of salvation. The reason she worshipped because she knew that, wow, this fulfillment that is foretold by the prophets is fulfilling in her. And that's a very great thing she gave thanks to God because she was chosen to be the one of the fulfiller of God's promise of salvation. And the third one is the death and resurrection of Christ is the only hope for the salvation of sinner. Mary knew that. That's why she said in verse 47, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She knew that, wow, this baby that she conceived was the Savior. It's a very important thing we must take, okay? It's God's work, not hers. And continue, okay? Mary knew her God. Okay, when she gave thanks to God, she knew God. This is very important to us also. The correct knowledge of God leads to correct worship. We always like to say we want to give uh, praise and worship, to sing song. It's not merely singing song to God, but do we have the right knowledge of God? And that will lead us to correct worship. And we know that Mary has had that correct knowledge of God because in her uh, song, from verses 49, uh, 46, uh, 48, okay, for, uh, till 55, she had addresses various attributes of God. The first one is God's omnipotence. In verse 49, he said that, For the mighty one has done great things for me. She knew that although uh, when angel Gabriel told her that she will conceive a son, but because she was a virgin, how could that happen? But because he knew that that is the power of Christ, God is omnipotent, is uh, uh, mighty, therefore she believed and she gave thanks. And another thing is in verse 55, that is the authority of God. She praised the authority of God in verse uh, 51. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. Mighty deeds. We know that throughout the history, God has done a lot of great things in humanity, including the greatest is the sending of Jesus Christ to be our Savior. That is very great thing in the history. Therefore, Mary knew that. And the second thing is God's holiness and justice in verse 49 and 52. Said, uh, she said that holy is his name. And in verse 52, he said, he, he has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Okay? Justice. Justice of God and holiness. Both two things is the same. Because God is holy, he cannot accept sin. And because of that, all humanity must die because of sin. But because God is just, uh, she, he punished those who sin. But she, he is also mercy and gives us Jesus Christ to be the salvation. And that gives us the third point why uh, Mary praised God. Because of God's mercy and love of God. And the the last one is God's faithfulness and covenant because in verse uh, 55, uh, 54 and 55, she said that he has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestor. God remembers what he has promised to us. Therefore, when Mary conceived Christ, he knew that, wow, God had fulfilled his promise just like he, he promises, he promised to Abraham and David and all the fathers. 
And here, all of this, we know that all of this uh, attribute of God was revealed by Christ. Christ was omnipotent because uh, he was almighty and he has the authority of God because he has the authority to forgive of sins. Jesus is holy because he is without sin. And Jesus is uh, a just judge because we know that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And Jesus is merciful because he always healed the people who, need, who were in need, who were in need. And it shows his love. And he himself said he is faithful and will keep his promise to the disciple. When he tell, uh, he told the disciple he, he must go through the way of crucifixion, but he told them to be not afraid because he will resurrect on the third day. That is the promise. And we know that all those things was fulfilled by Christ. And some of us will ask, Okay, some will ask that, okay, we know that we must only worship God, but what's wrong if we honor Mary as we honor our ancestor, we or we honor our great ones in the history that contributes a lot? And because we know that Mary is so great to conceive Christ, so why then we why should we not give uh, honor to Mary? So someone said that uh, one of the very uh, very what do you call that famous uh, honor song to Mary is the Ave Maria. If you have go to the convent school or Catholic school before, some of the sisters, the nuns or the priests, the fathers will teach. Okay, we'll talk this during the class. So in this Ave Maria, actually there is two sections. One section is praising uh, Mary and another section is uh, seeking Mary's intercession. Okay, we will go into this. Okay, the first part actually is actually praising Mary because this part is um, biblical because it's based on what Gabriel said to Mary and what Elizabeth said to Mary. So the first part, praising Mary, actually that part is biblical. But the second part, this uh, seeking Mary's intercession was not biblical because this petition first appeared in print in 1495. And this petition was commonly added around the time of Council of Trent. So this petition does not exist in the ancient church liturgical text and is not taught in the Bible. So maybe some of us, okay, if like that for the first, uh, the second part of Ave Maria, I don't use, but I use the first part. Can we do that? Because it is according to the Bible. So what is uh, our teaching, okay? First is, uh, you, may, you may ask, praising Mary, can we praise? Because like, just like we honor those who are great in the history, like uh, for Chinese, there is Kongzi or Manishas. Uh, for Indians, maybe there is some Sadhus or great holy men. So is, is it wrong that we can honor their great works? So the first thing we must think, some will, may argue that they did not uh, worship Mary, but their action demonstrate that they're actually doing so. The problem there is overzealous in exalting Mary. Because if we honor someone, we just honor maybe uh, one, of, one day, we take a day, we honor him, just like uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, or what, Pastor's Day, we take one day just to honor, that's all. But what those churches, the Roman churches, taught is you must always use this praise, Ave Maria, in your devotion. And that's wrong. We Anglican Church does not teach that one should have Marian devotion. Yes, we can honor her by commemorating her. Just like today, we commemorate her. But we cannot do it every day or even in our private prayer. That is wrong because that shows that we have faith in her, not in God. So do, don't burden ourselves with unbiblical teaching. If Bible did tell us, although it is recorded, that particular incident is recorded there, but the Bible and apostles did not teach us to recite that always. 
Okay, for example, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, when David the king fight against the Philistine and won, all the Israelites say, long life, David. So if, if that verse is uh, found in the Bible, so is it means that we should always in our prayers say, long life, David, long life, David. That is not right, right? We cannot take out the context. So when uh, Angel and Elizabeth greet and praise Mary, that is in historical fact and also is just one incident, once incident occurred that time. It's not, uh, will be used in our private prayer. That is wrong. Because according to uh, Anglican uh, Articles of Faith, it says that whatsoever is not read therein in the Bible, nor may be reproved thereby, is not be required of any man that it should be believed as an article of faith or be taught requisite or necessary to salvation. Bible does not teach that, so that is not necessary. We always recite that particular verses. Yeah, that is the thing we must take note. And the Roman church has instituted so-called rosary prayers and has included a lot of saint prayers to Mary. That's not merely, uh, merely honoring, but it's actually praying to her and having faith in her. That is forbidden by the Bible. My brother and sister, so Ave Maria is somehow half truth. It is correct, half is an is a historical fact. But when we turn it into private devotion and use it every day, it seems like we are over obsessed with Mary, and that's wrong. If we over access or obsess something rather than God, that is idolatry. We must remember that. And second thing, we, we may ask, okay. Actually, we do not pray to Mary. We just seek her intercession, just like we seek others. Like, oh, we ask, okay, brother and sister, will you pray for me because I have this problem? So what's wrong if we ask Mary to pray for us? Some will say that, will argue that. So the first thing is, the Bible does not teach that we can seek intercession from those who have gone to the Lord. Okay, it did not explicitly told us that because we know that when someone goes to the Lord, that is another dimension. And the Bible does teach that we can pray, uh, we can ask other Christians who are still living here to pray for us. That is correct. We can ask our brother and sister, sister to pray for us, but must on the earth, we can still communicate. And in Anglican articles, he said that the Romish doctrine concerning invocation of saints is a form thing mainly invented and grounded upon no warranty of scripture, but rather repugnant to the word of God. It is not biblical and it's not taught in the Bible. We have no assurance that Mary can hear us. Okay, even that, okay, you say that, oh, we just ask Mary to pray for us. But how sure are we, we can say that Mary can hear all of our petitions? And if she can do that, actually she is like God already. Only God can listen to all kinds of petitions in one time from all different people, different persons. So if Mary can do that, actually we have the problem of over deifying Mary, and that is idolatry, and that's wrong. So we, we can look at Mary's response to God's calling. Mary does not did not want us to focus on her, but rather God, because from her response, Mary received God's grace by faith and obeyed God's calling by action. It's a good example for every disciple because in verse 38 in Luke chapter 1, Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from him. So this shows the humility of um, Mary to obey God. If Mary obey God, so why should we disobey God to, uh, to give over praise to Mary? Mary did not exalt herself, but submit only to God. And so through her, we can see the right faith in her. The right spirit must in us is have faith and obey God. This is what Mary gives us as an example, a very good example. 
And we maybe if one day Mary or we, we meet Mary, she will oh, she will be very sad when she found that we idolized her because her intention is she wanted only fulfilling God's will and to be God's servant. That's all, not being uh, praised or being exalted by us. And from the uh, the last part I want to share is Mary's mission. What is Mary's mission to us? Mary wanted us to obey Jesus Christ's commands. In the last recorded saying of Mary in the Bible is based on John chapter 2, verse 15, where uh, the miracle, first miracle performed by Jesus in the wedding of Cana. Okay, Mary said to the servants there, do whatever Jesus Christ tells you. Because during the wedding, they are shortage of wine. So that's why when they are shortage of wine, Mary told the servants to do whatever Jesus told them. So this is a very great thing also to as a reminder to us. Mary's mission is she wanted us to obey Christ the man. Very important thing. Not her, but Christ's demand. We look at Mary's response to God's calling. She was humble, had faith, and an obeying spirit. That is very um, precious thing as a Christian. And we can know the heart of Mary. She wanted us to listen to Jesus. This is very important. And we know that there are a lot of people out there want to honor her because oh, uh, Mary sacrificed a lot to give birth to Christ because we know that during that particular uh, society and culture, a woman that without husband, you conceive a child is like a very difficult thing to be accepted by the culture. But because of that, we should honor uh, Mary. Okay, some will, will say this. But today, through what we have gone through, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, we have a good understanding about Mary. She was like us, a woman in faith who needed Savior. To honor her, we listen to her word. Okay? That is to obey Christ. So that's the correct view. And we are not ashamed to say that Mary is truly our good example in faith. Just like other forefathers like Abraham, like Moses, like David, like all the apostles. We must have the good understanding, the, the good way to honor Mary. That is to do what Mary uh, gave us as an example. Just like when we say we want to obey and want to honor our father and mother, we do, we do not need to do, or we do not need to every day we praise him or her, but we just do what they, they, said, they have set an example to let us to follow. That is what we can do. And what is the true blessedness of magnifying God or glorifying God? Because we know that some will feel like they need to praise God. So uh, praise Mary. So during uh, one occasion, there is a woman raised her voice and said to Jesus, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nurse. But Jesus said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So my brother and sister in Christ, you can see, we do not need to praise Mary just like this woman in, the old, uh, in this uh, situation. But Jesus said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Mary is honored not because she was very special and she earned anything from her own good works. But no, it's God's grace chose her to be the vessel. And she had given us a very good example to obey Jesus, to obey God. And that is the thing that why Mary was called a blessed woman because she obeyed God's word and that should be our ultimate aim in our life. Hear the word of God and keep it, not praising Mary. So from today, I, I'm very thankful because I have this opportunity once again to clarify our views about Mary. 
And we now we have the very good view. Yes, Mary is the mother of Christ. That is our God and Lord. And Christ is both human and divine. And Mary is just a normal woman, just like us, as a human, has sin and need Jesus as her savior. And we should follow her steps to always listen and obey God's word. And that is the right way we honor Mary, not praising her and worshiping her. So let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we are thank you because you have given us a correct understanding about your servant Mary. We know that today we use this time to commemorate her because she had set an example, a good example to us so that we could follow her steps to obey all the commandments and all your will, O oh Lord. Only you are worthy to be worshipped and only you are worthy to be praised. Abide that there is none are like you. O oh Lord, help us in our daily life to be obedient just like Mary and to do whatsoever you have written in the Bible. Help us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. And we pray in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for the gift of life, for opportunity to worship you together through this online service. Father, we want to thank you that you are always good. Help each one of us not to worry but in everything, Lord, to pray to you and to trust that you will work all things out for good. Thank you that you always remind us that life in this world is temporary. And although we should always do our best to love you, to enjoy what you have given to us, yet our eyes is to be set on heaven so that we can live a life that glorify you. And Lord, you know that we are weak. So may your Holy Spirit Continue, Lord, to guide us, strengthen us, Lord, in these difficult times. So, Father, we want to pray for all the nations. May your will be done, Lord, in these last days, especially, Lord, with this uh, pandemic going on, and there seems to be no control. But, Father, we confess you are the one who sits on the throne, and you have decreed what is to take place. So, may you grant grace, Lord, and stir up the hearts of all people to repent and believe the gospel. Have mercy, Lord. And we pray for Malaysia. We pray, God, for good leaders in the country that will do what is right. Strengthen the hearts of those to do what is right, Lord, and let those who are self-seeking, Lord, may you have mercy on them that they may turn from their ways. May you give us a government that cares for all peoples, regardless of race, religion, or language. Just one Malaysia to your praise and glory. We pray for our Anglican Church in West Malaysia, together with all churches in Christ in Malaysia, that, Lord, we will stand as one witness. We thank you for all the many good efforts that are going on uh, to uh, gather our support and help for those in need, especially for those who are affected by the COVID-19. Father, we pray that you will continue to supply uh, the needs of this organization that will be helpful in many ways. Father, we remember the parish of St. Paul. Father, we thank you for your continued grace upon us. May you continue to watch over each one of us, whether young and old, in the English congregation, Chinese congregation, Tamil congregation, 
and the Bahasa Malaysia congregation. Lord, all of us belongs to you. May you, may your grace and mercies be strong upon our lives, even at this time where we cannot meet uh, physically. And Lord, we commend to you, uh, all of us, especially the PEC and the pastor, what we should do about reopening the church for physical services. We pray for your wisdom, patience, that we will do what is good and right with your blessings. So Father, we thank you for listening to our prayers. May your will alone be done. You are alone are worthy. You are alone uh, to be praised and glorified. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. consider as good time or bad time when we are in the right relationship with God all things will work for good praise the Lord so welcome to this morning's online service I want to thank brother Jack for sharing the Word of God especially remembering uh, today is uh, St. Mary's Day We are all very concerned about our physical services uh, but I must say brothers and sisters uh, in spite of the allowance for those who have been fully vaccinated I would say that let us not open up so quickly but take some time to look at it and probably the earliest we uh, can consider open opening will be in September sometime in September we need to be very careful because the virus is really uh, very uh, bad this time. So Agape is having their semester break and when we start in October, do pray for our students, especially those that we have met in church and uh, pray for the new uh, intake in October. So Rasa Anglican Church, we continue to have online uh, service following our main uh, our parish uh, Chinese service so uh, remember always to care for others so are there any needy ones that you are aware of uh, your neighbors yeah, those in your neighborhood uh, the church will help yeah? so do inform inform me and uh, we will make arrangement either to buy food uh, or to uh, give cash vouchers or something like that. The main idea is that the church will help. So we are all the eyes and hands and heart representing our God. So brothers and sisters, do wear masks. Uh, as the government says, we recommend double masks whenever we go out. Yeah, and wash our hands regularly and keep the physical space because uh, things are really getting very bad and uh, these few days we have about 31 uh, infections in slim area itself but nevertheless always pray do not be anxious about anything and then let us obey the Lord uh, and he will know what to do with us praise the Lord so as we close let us say the grace together 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. So brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.